Welcome back to another exciting episode of Aaron's Opinion, the podcast for blind people where we talk about critical issues in the blindness community. I'm Aaron Richmond. Tonight we're talking about a very serious topic. So many of you in the community want to talk about feeling lonely, feeling sad, and as a matter of fact, we are joined by two, basically two podcasters, two podcasters this evening who have a podcast just about this very topic called How I Grieve. Welcome, Ian and Amy, to Aaron's Opinion. Let's just jump, jump right in. So what is How I Grieve? How did you get started in this? Go ahead, either one of you. Okay. Um, Amy and I met um, through our grief, through our mutual grief. Um, Amy uh, had lost her husband uh, first, and then my wife passed shortly thereafter. And I'll let Amy talk briefly about her husband, Dave. So I um, lost my husband quite suddenly um, in July of 2020. Um, he passed away from a, an unexpected heart attack. Um, and um, I, um, through the process of navigating the grief process, was looking to connect with other people experiencing similar um, feelings and, and experiences. And that's how I found Ian. I, um, in October of 2020, October 9th, uh, lost my wife, Michelle, to COVID-19 um, very suddenly and very traumatically. She um, had a major cardiac event in our bedroom once she had gotten out of the hospital after 30 days of being there for COVID and being on a ventilator for six of those days. Um, and, um, you know, it was one of those things that created PTSD for me and, and many other emotions and feelings. And I had to perform CPR on her. So it was just, it was all around just a very traumatic event. So I went through a, a grief process of um, venting my grief to non-mask wearing folks uh, and venting my grief in the sadness of losing one's spouse to COVID by posting um, messages and videos, mainly on TikTok. And I love telling this story because I think Amy and I have a very unconventional way in which we met because we met on TikTok and our relationship grew on TikTok. And out of the hundreds of people who reached out to myself, and I think Amy will in turn agree that she had hundreds of people reach out to her to help offer support. Out of everyone who reached out and messaged, I felt compelled to choose Amy. And uh, she chose me by sending me a message first and saying, hey, you know, I know what you're going through. If you need to chat, I'm here. And something just f the universe, call it a God thing, call it intuition, call it just right time, right place. Something f pushed me to, to reach out to Amy um, and our conversation started uh, in chat. And then uh, I asked her for her phone number. <laughs> uh, we joke and say that she instantly wanted my phone number because, well, that just makes me feel good. But um, it was actually my, <laughs> it was actually me who, who asked for her phone number. And as soon as I had it, we started chatting and FaceTiming and, and every day we would talk and we helped one another through some really difficult times. Um, lots of grief, lots of sadness, lots of moments of just, just wanting to scream. And sometimes we did and moments where we're just ugly crying and she would lift me up and I would lift her up uh, and, and our relationship grew from there. And we had a moment in time where we realized that, you know, the phrase everyone grieves differently really was applying to us because we were moving very fast in our connection and our feelings for one another, but we were also grieving in a very non-conventional way. Um, you know, TikTok was our grieving platform. Uh, and and it gave us some sense of an outlet, some sense of solace other than the therapy I was going to, other than going to the gym and just, you know, pedaling for an hour to get my frustrations out and things like that. And um, we took that phrase, everyone grieves differently. And we're like, hey, we should do a podcast. We should, we should give a platform to allow people to tell their stories um, because in the end, I think it's their stories that will maybe help someone else who listens to that story. There could be someone out there who just doesn't know the first step to take to process their grief, where to go, who to turn to. Are they grieving appropriately? Are they grieving inappropriately? Uh, Amy? Oh, 
I, I was just going to ask you, don't you think that um, although you, you know, COVID took Michelle, that the isolation of the pandemic compounded oh, certainly. the grieving process and, and certainly was much more isolating than potentially any other time that we've known in history. Right. The, uh, that's, a, that's a great point because the idea of our podcast in dealing with loss and the grief of that loss, there are so many uh, forms of loss, including just losing your lifestyle to the pandemic. In 2020, so many of us had to just stop seeing one another. Uh, mm. And that was hard enough. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden losing your physical support system. The biggest thing I missed, Aaron, more than anything else, even before Michelle passed, the biggest thing, I'm a hugger, man. And not being able to hug people you know, was just, it was gut wrenching. Just the littlest thing is just human contact was just, that was a loss unto itself that was hard to process mm -hmm. in 2020, you know? So that's a, that's a really great point. Um, and so we, we, we de developed this podcast and we had our very first episode last week and it was more just an introduction to our story, how we met the idea behind the podcast and why we wanted to do it. Uh, and so far, I'd say the response uh, of our little engine that could has been really favorable. We've gotten some actually some just some Facebook messages uh, of people reaching out, just thanking us for for being so open and, and guiding them through some very difficult times. And it's not always the loss of a spouse. It's not always the loss of a human. Um, you know, we've had some people talk about loss of jobs, going through divorce, loss of lifestyle, loss of a pet, you know, something like that. So we're hoping over the years, and I want this to be a long-term thing, we're hoping over the years to cover all sorts of loss, you know? Without, without doubt. So uh, first, I'm sorry for your loss to both of you. Thank you. Uh, all of us in the, in the community, after we record this episode, you'll be added to my WhatsApp group, my private group for Aaron's opinion. Uh, it's the kindest group on WhatsApp. Everybody is super nice in that group because I'm the administrator. That's how Excellent. that works. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so the so the other the other the other huge question, you know, that, that I'm that I'm seeing in in the community, in, in in the blindness community on various Facebook groups and forums, is so many people in the community have so many are expressing loss in so many different ways and are so frustrated. Mm. Whether it's, I mean. I, I don't know. I want to ask you because I don't know what the right answer is. I'm going to ask your opinion about this. I, I don't think I can compare some of the losses that I have seen around the community where I podcast or the people I talk to, to the losses that you two have gone through, um, you know, losing, losing a spouse. I, you can't, you can't compare you. It's not comparable. I don't think I'm, I'm a young guy. I'm single. I'm 29 years old. Uh, for many reasons, I live with my parents and brother. It's, it's a bit of a long story. Um, but you know, losing, I can, um, I cannot imagine the, the loss of a spouse. And then, you know, we see all of these various, um, you know, com complaints around the community in, in the blindness community. Oh, I've lost my job. I don't have anything to do. I can't get out. The most common one that I see is I can't leave my house now. And I'm starting to notice, you know, and I mm -hmm. think that that's, mm. that's, that's really, again, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to compare because it's not possible, but I will tell you that a lot of people in the community are very frustrated just being inside all the time. I think at this sure. point, I think at this point, it's starting to wear people out. I'll, I'll be, I'll, I'll be forthcoming and tell you it's starting to wear me out, you <laughs> yeah, know, right. with my, my online job. I mean, which is a job I love. Thanks God for that. But, you know, still there's a lot, a lot of young people, a lot of people really in all ages who have lost their job and will never get it back. And that I, I can't stop. I couldn't stomach that. I can't fathom that loss. You know, the right. law, there's a lot of different, elements going around right now so my question is this if i see another post in these various groups blind people saying they're they're depressed they're lonely mm -hmm. they're lost they don't know what to do mm -hmm. what would be some good wisdom that both of you could give as far as appropriately and effectively addressing the feeling of grief that so many in the community are facing right. mm -hmm. amy Sure. Um, I, I think that, you know, the thing that Ian and I both, and, and I think I can speak for him in this uh, answer, that we have both uh, benefited from greatly is just the, the outlets of, 
the, the of social media um now that can be a double-edged sword for sure um because there are certainly some people who are not always kind um <clears throat> However, um, I think that figuring out other ways to connect safely, obviously, you know, due to the pandemic um, is important. I think it sounds like you have a a wonderful community already um, of people um, in in your message boards and whatnot. I think also um, figuring out if there's, you know, a, a new hobby, a new interest something um to take up maybe some of that empty time or that that idle time that uh certainly uh can be difficult when when you're in the middle of 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 dealing with loss like the loss of a job yeah um 100 agree with that also i'm sitting here thinking and a, and a thought came to mind and and on a couple points. First of all, I want to address Aaron, how you were saying how you, you can't imagine and how you, you can't compare. And I don't know. And I, you know, I hear in my head, I, I often say, and I often tell people, look, everybody's fear is real, regardless of what the fear is, fear of snakes, fear of flying, fear of heights, whatever. Everybody's fear is real and it affects them. A person who's afraid of snakes is going to be as equally as effective as a person who's afraid of flying. In the same thing, I think it somewhat compares in the same way to, to loss. Um, you know, mm. I'm going to, I'm going to maybe make an assumption here that everyone in your community, uh, in your, in your group for, for the blind, um, maybe not all of them were born blind. Maybe them, maybe some of them lost their sight somewhere along the way. You're you're a hundred percent, you're a hundred percent correct about that. And that that, you're absolutely correct. That's exactly what's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a huge, that's a huge loss. I mean, honestly, I look at, someone in, in your position uh, who, who, who may have either been born blind or lost their sight. And I can't imagine all of a sudden not being able to see the things I've seen uh, in, in my lifetime. And that, that would be a, a loss where I would look at you and go, yes, I've lost a loved one uh, to, to, to physical death. But to me, I don't think it would compare to losing something like not being able to see a sunrise again or something like that. So I think you, I think you can safely, equate the level of a loss like that to to death everyone's death everyone's everyone's loss everyone's fear is is equivalent uh and unique to them so so there's that and secondly the the as you were talking and and as amy was talking you know the, the the term secret santa came into my head um and i don't know how it would execute for your group uh of of uh listeners and the group in your whatsapp group but is there a way to somehow spread some cheer and send each other little surprise packages. It could be a homemade, handmade craft. You know, just have people offer up their 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 shipping information, a PO box, or or whatever, and and somehow spread a little joy that way. That way, it gives the giver a sense of purpose, but it also gives the recipient something to lift their spirits. And it was Amy who actually made me realize uh, as I was going through my grief that, you know, I would always say, I you know, I don't. I don't necessarily want them to come over and bring me food and do these things for me. I can, I can do this by myself. And she made me realize that, that the person doing the giving you accepting that is as much as a gift back to them uh, as their gift to you is to you. And, and, and it was a, it was a realization to me that made me uh, change my perspective on letting people help during my time of grief. It's that's interesting. No, um, I've I've never thought of that, and I've never set up a PO box. Um, obviously, uh, publishing podcast episodes where we talk about grief that doesn't necessarily lift, lift people's spirits either in the community. So, <laughs> so I'm not I'm not, so I, I'm not sure. So I when you started mentioning Secret Santa, I wasn't sure we were off to the right start. You know, let's <laughs> let's start. Okay, we're gonna okay talk about something happy. Okay, great. Let's talk about grief. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's that's that that's that's actually a good way of getting into it. But I'm just not sure it will lift everyone's spirits. I hope it will help everyone in my community and my listener base. But making them feel better. Well, maybe, maybe not. Um, so short answer, no. But then again, I do wish that more people in the community would get into the hobby of podcasting and content creation mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. it certainly makes 
me feel better. It certainly makes other people feel better. It's certainly interesting, certainly engaging, right? It's certainly, you know, educational. So one thing that people could give, I don't know, guys, what do you guys think in, in, in the listener base, maybe on YouTube, comment below or something, but maybe, I don't know, maybe a listener can try to create one episode of their very own podcast and then send it in to me or something like that for my review or something, something like that. Yeah. Right. Have them tell their story and you can share it within the context of this podcast or something like that. But which is what they do because people come onto the podcast as my guest. So it's kind of, yeah, yeah. That's, I do mostly interviews like this, um, usually with one person at a time, but mostly interviews, but I, I, that's, that's a really good suggestion. Some sort of a, some sort of a positive, positive way of telling people to cheer up and create something a little bit more, happier but um one of the one of the problems in the disability and blindness community is that some people become so bogged down and so negative yeah. that it's very 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 hard even if and i've tried even if i try to lift their spirits even if i have them on my show to cheer them up or to just help them out you know it can be really hard for some for some people um to kind of you know, get kind of get out of that funk, as we would say, or, you know, it can be really, it's, it's easier, it's easier said than done, but it's a really, it's, it's a really good idea. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, we, um, we today just sort of branded a, I guess, a mission statement or slogan, if you will. Um, and it speaks to what you were talking about. And, and it, and it says this, basically, it's grieve differently, heal collectively. And, Yes, grief is a is a hard and challenging and sad topic, but as you start to shift in the direction of healing collectively by everyone telling their stories and everyone chipping in and everyone getting creative about how they're going to lift people up, um, that that collective um, crowdsourcing, if you will, that inspirational crowdsourcing, I think is important in any journey of of loss. Amy. Oh, no, I would, I would 100% agree. I think that, you know, that was, that was the thing that I was most hungry for um, in, in some of my darkest times was, was talking with people who had experienced it, and maybe, maybe gotten through it a little bit further in the process and could provide some encouragement to me. Um, Because I wanted to know, am I, am I, going to get through this? Am I going to be okay? Is there life on the other side of this? Can I, what can I do to get through this? And um, that was, that was absolutely 100% um, what I was seeking. And definitely, I think I resonate so much with that statement that you read, Ian. Yes. Yeah. I, I certainly, I certainly agree. Um, okay. So besides grief, I mean, I guess, I guess I was wondering how are you guys planning on like organizing your podcast? Are you going to like have people like call into the show and have conversations? Are you going to have people send in stories that maybe they would want you to read aloud or just, are you going to do a lot of different things on your show? Um, right now yeah. we, that's a great question, Aaron. Right now we have, uh, several guests already, uh, lined up for interviews and we'll do a lot of them over zoom for now. Um, and a variety of topics ready to go. In fact, the, the next episode, which is going to air, uh, on Monday, the 1st of February is going to be a discussion about ALS and the loss of a loved one through ALS, but yet love found and the journey there over the 17 years that followed, um, and the hardships that followed with that. And it's going to be a really good story uh, told from a perspective of a, 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 a wife who essentially loses her identity from being a wife to turning into a caregiver, if you will. So we'll deal with that. I've had people reach out to us who want to talk about um, loss and channeling that grief into creating nonprofits to do something positive. Um, I've had uh, a woman reach out who wants to talk about the loss of family structure more specifically mom and dad going through a divorce and how hard that was on her. Um, I have a woman who wants to come on and talk about the loss of her dad and how she's finding light and support 
in exactly what we're talking about through your community. And that is simply by just talking to people. She's found some great um, moments of, of support by simply just creating videos on YouTube where she is, she is sharing her story and getting it out. And it's almost like, because we can't be together, it's almost her therapy group, if you will. Um, and then, you know, down the road, there'll be topics from, you know, loss of a pet to loss of a job to potentially if, if any of your listeners ever want to call in and talk about the loss of their sight, if they were one of those folks who were physically ah, unable yeah. to, you know, they, they're more than welcome to reach out to us sure, and tell their story. Sure, sure, sure. sure. You know, and I, I was just thinking, I guess I was just thinking of grief through exactly what, what how you guys experienced it in your own your own lives but you're you're absolutely right i mean i think that there's a lot i've had several guests um who have talked about you know going blind i mean i've heard i've heard it all i had one guy who became blind because he was hit over the head with a brick mm. another guy became blind because it was a woman actually she shot her eye out with a thumbtack mm. another Another very, another very interesting and very spiritual, and this is someone who, um, well, I, I won't say his name, but if I did, I'm sure I, he, he's kind of a, a good friend in my community, and he's he's very comfortable with this. I once interviewed a retired correctional officer at a prison, um, and what I mean by that is he was a a person who worked. Just to clarify. He worked at the prison. He was right. not right. Um, and there's, of course, a joke in the correctional officer community, apparently, about that. No, I just work here. There's, there's that <laughs> ongoing. There's a, apparently, there's a, there's a lot of social jokes, of, and he told some scary stories. Well, to make a long story short, he um, became blind. He lost his vision. I don't know. It's a, it's a. You, I mean, if you're that interested, I can send you the episode at a later date. He loses his vision, and so you know, and has to retire from his job at, at the prison. Well, about a week later. He gets a call from two two of his friends, um, also COs there, and he says, "Oh, you know, God, God, you know, uh, Mister uh, Mister Park, um, did did you hear that um, Joe? We'll call him like Joe and Aaron, um, or Joe and Adam got stabbed, and they're and they're in the hospital in the ICU. No, no, I didn't hear about that." He said, and then it occurred to him that those two officers were working in exactly the same cell block mm. that he would have been working in. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but exactly the same time that he was working there and exactly the same moment that he would have been dealing with those inmates. So he said, mm. if, if one of those types of spiritual things, it's horrible, but so God moved them out of the way right. and those two other people ended up surviving. So there's wow. it, one of those, one of those spiritual things, God does do that. Sometimes he moves people around. Sorry. No, you know, you know, you, you, you lost your vision. So I'm going to, I'm going to move you. I'm going to move you out of that prison. basically. Yeah. And, and luckily the other people survived. So that's a very, I think that's one of the, I mean, I've heard a thousand interesting stories, but that is a really good example of sometimes there's these weird little things that happen in life that move us around. And right. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. Yeah. And that's actually, I'm glad you brought that up because that's another topic that we're going to cover. Um, we're going to cover grief and loss from a religious lens. Uh, because, you know, we often mm. find ourselves uttering the phrase where we're blaming God for our loss. God, why did you let this happen? You know, um, and even then the old religious cliches of God never gives you more than you can handle or God has a plan. So we're going to have a pastor on to talk about all those, you know, Christian cliches and the blame game of God and, and really dissect that in the terms of loss. So we have lots of really great ideas. And I think just as the episodes air, we will have more and more listeners as our listener base grows who become brave enough to share. It'll be, it'll be similar to like an eighth grade dance, you know, where you, you, you're, 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 the, you're the wallflower and you don't want to quite go out there and dance yet, but you wait three or four songs. And once everybody else goes to the dance floor, then you're going to go out there too. So I think, I think we've really, we really have just t scratched the surface of what uh, our podcast, How I Grieve can be and what, what it can grow into. So I'll tell you that anytime I go out in a public place, I wear a mask. I'm I, I'm into that mask wearing concept. Thank you, thank you. You you are you are welcome. However, um, what is the real reason psychologically why so many people in the community are unwilling to wear a mask? I mean, my family and I we know people who refuse. Can you can you educate me about that? Can you tell me why people would refuse to wear a mask? Um, Amy, I'm gonna let you start. 
<laughs> I, you know, I think the thing that I've heard probably the most is that uh, it encroaches on their freedom or maybe they don't believe that the virus is that bad or that it's going to happen to them. Yeah. But wouldn't they be in wouldn't they be invading my safety and freedom if they were mm. asymptomatic mm. and, and yes. So then so then who's who's in the right? I'm I'm still I'm telling you because I do believe um in wearing masks. Um and I am I have signed up to get the vaccine. So excellent. Uh, Good for you. So you know, but then again, I've had people on the show who are vehement um anti-vaxxers for various reasons right uh so you know i i just i understand it on one hand and then, and then on the other i struggle to understand that psychology because i think there's times in history where you can kind of i don't want to say take it less seriously but i think there i guess there are times in history where, where, where we can kind of debate a little bit but in this case, I don't think this is a debate. I mean, in my opinion, I think this is a pretty, pretty clear situation. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I have been very passionate and very upfront with how I feel about all of this, considering, uh, you know, I lost my wife to, to COVID. Um, and Amy touched on all the important points as far as, you know, it, it's a lot of this. It won't happen to me um, or it's not real or it's just a bad cold or something like that. Right. Uh, but it also goes further than that. I think, you know, I have no problem saying people know where I stand on this. I have no problem saying that it, it was also a culture that was bred over the last four years to to give a voice to those people who were conspiracy theorists or didn't want to fall in line and didn't want to uh, didn't want to do the the right thing. They wanted to do their own thing and didn't want to be yeah, told what yeah. didn't want to be told what to do. All of a sudden they had a voice and a poster child to look up to. And, and, and that's unfortunately how that culture got built. Right. Um, but at the, at, the, at, the, at the end of the day, you know, it, it, we're still far from um, eradicating that culture because now it's just simply moved from, you know, wearing a mask or not wearing a mask to I'm not taking the vaccine because they're implanting little 5g antennas into my arm and, and uh, they're going to be able to follow me wherever I go. So you see how, how right, it can get right. preposterously down a rabbit hole very fast. You know, and, and by the way, guys, don't forget Aaron's opinion six at gmail.com to comment on the episode one, two, four, zero, six, eight, one, nine, eight, six, nine. Don't forget follow on Facebook, Twitter, even consider becoming a patron on my Patreon page or comment below right here on this video. As we start to run out of time today on this recording, I will tell you that, yeah, it's really crazy. And it's really guys, it's really, really, really important to not, to not believe in these conspiracies. I, I recorded an episode uh, just a couple of weeks ago with a, a particular reporter who reported on, um, speaking of a bizarre story, the American Patriot, it's a very long story. Uh, this uh, guy who had a very hard life, who wanted to be a superhero and things got a little, um, got a little out of, got a little out of hand. So it's really important not to believe in these conspiracy theories, but Unfortunately, I, I see in the community that the conspiracy theorists are there's growing beliefs in these things that are are very strange. I mean, neither one of you know me, but if you did, you would know that I believe in some bizarre stuff. But the conspiracy theories that people are coming up with now are too scary even for me to believe. So, you know, it's really concerning. Mm -hmm. I get it. But I appreciate your message of wear a mask. I think that's uh, that's super important. And, and we all look, we all believe what we're going to believe and we are all passionate about what we're passionate about, but there's a certain point in which you have to set that aside yeah. and simply just do the right thing for humanity. Absolutely. Absolutely. If someone wants to get in touch with your podcast, if someone wants to share their story of, of grief, spirituality, how, how would they do that? Super, super easy. Uh, website is howigrieve.com, howigrieve.com, or you can send us an email to howigrieve at gmail.com and we're available on twitter instagram and facebook just search how i grieve fantastic to both of you have been great guests i i like to close out every episode of my podcast with a great question i'll pose it to either one of you and either one of you can answer it in any way that you like um you neither one of you know me so if you can ask me one question to see if i'm worth my salt to really make me sweat what do you really want to ask me go ahead amy <laughs> oh no 
No. All right. <laughs> I, well, I'm deferring to you. Okay. Uh, first of all, first of all, um, you say you're legally blind. I, I'm blind. I was born blind with glaucoma and a congenital uh, heart defect. Okay, so this is going to be a completely inappropriate statement, but I feel comfortable enough saying this to you, Aaron, because no, you're 29 no, you can, years old. You can never, by the way, I am a completely inappropriate person to which you could never offend. Just, and so I'm just sure, say what's on your mind. I, I'm sure, I'm sure this is, I'm not going to be the first person to say this, but I'm a little jealous. I'm a little jealous the fact that you are blind because right. having to wear a mask, you don't have to worry about seeing the fog on your lenses as well, you walk around. Actually, I do have some usable vision, so my lenses. Do, okay, all right, all right. So do fo do fo they do fog up a little bit, but you know what? I don't worry about that because I think you know what? I would rather keep myself and other people safe and just wear the mask. Okay, very good. Um, so, but that's kind of a statement. That's not really a question. So, do you have a a, a question? <laughs> um, if you could, if you could get your sight back, what would mm -hmm. be the first thing you would look forward to seeing? Well, I have usable vision and I would never restore my vision for the reason that as Samuel Clemens says, there's only two days that are important, the day we're born and the day we know why. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge topic in the blindness community. I would never restore my vision. So okay. I, I would never, question. sure. Uh, what's your favorite smell? Co uh, coffee. Okay. Oh, huge. that's a good one. That's a good one. Huge coffee addict. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. well, because because obviously those other senses are heightened uh, do, with, with with your vision as it is. So I was curious as to what is your favorite smell because I'm sure you notice many of them, maybe more so than the average person. So perhaps, perhaps. Okay, but Amy, you aren't off the hook. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. <clears throat> hmm. Do you, okay, this, this is going to sound really ignorant, so you're going to have to just bear with me. Mm -hmm. Do you have, do you watch TV? And I say watch, like yeah, maybe yes. not in the traditional sense. Yes, is the, yes okay. is the answer. So, the so what is your favorite show? Any, any historical show, any nature show, anything, anything like that is, is my favorite. All right. Okay. okay. Um, and I want to actually say thank you to both of you for joining me. That was a magnificent episode. Guys, I'll put the link in the description. As we say here at Aaron's Opinion, by the way, I want to share one more story with you guys all, um, offline. Thanks so much for listening. A very serious episode. Comment below. Help one person today. Help a million people tomorrow. Take care, everybody.